Hey everyone, welcome back. So look at what I've got here. This is the iPhone 12 mini in that deep glossy blue. It's 2026 and this phone is officially five years old and yeah, approaching six. You might be wondering why are we even talking about this thing? Well, honestly, a lot of you guys are still holding on to these, whether it's the mini or the regular 12 and I totally get it. It was such a huge shift when it came out. In this video, I want to walk you through what it's actually like using the iPhone 12 in 2026. We're going to cover the design, how that A14 chip is holding up against modern apps, the battery situation, which spoiler alert is kind of a struggle, and of course, the software. I've got iOS 26 running on this little guy and it's, well, it's interesting. I'm also going to help you decide if it's finally time to upgrade to the iPhone 17, I mean, is the jump really that significant or can you squeeze another year out of this? Let's just get into it. First, let's just bridge back to why this phone was so special. When Apple dropped this in 2020, it was the start of that super cycle. They brought back the flat edges from the iPhone 4 and 5 days. And honestly, even six years later, this design doesn't feel old. It actually feels pretty classic. I'm holding the mini model here, but everything I'm going to say applies to the regular 6.1 inch iPhone 12 too, because the only real difference is just the size, you know, display and battery. This blue color, it still looks great. It's got that glossy back, which yeah, picks up fingerprints like crazy compared to the matte finish on the newer models, but it has character. But here's the thing, holding it now compared to the iPhone 17, you really feel the ergonomics. This mini is tiny. It's a one handed dream, but that small size comes with physics issues we'll talk about in a second, mainly heat. Talking about the display, this is where things start to show their age. The iPhone 12 has that OLED Super Retina XDR screen, which is still sharp, don't get me wrong, colors are punchy, but it's stuck at 60 Hz. In 2026, 60 Hz is just, it's old tech, guys. Even the base model iPhone 17 now finally, finally has 120 Hertz ProMotion. When you swipe around on iOS 26 with all these new animations, the 12 just feels choppier. It's not that the phone is slow, it's just that the screen can't keep up with how fluid the software wants to be. If you've never used a 120 Hertz phone, you might not notice, but once you see them side by side, you can't unsee it. Speaking of software, this phone is running the latest iOS 26, which came out a few months ago. And I have to give Apple credit. It's amazing that a six year old phone is running the newest OS on day one. iOS 26 introduced this new liquid glass design language, right? Everything has these translucent layers and the animations are super fluid. It makes older versions like iOS 18 look ancient. But I've noticed something. Because the iPhone 12 is rocking the A14 chip, rendering all these fancy glass effects makes the phone work hard. Like just multitasking, doing some light editing, or even scrolling through spatial scenes wallpapers, the phone gets noticeably warm. It's like the processor is capable, but the thermal management in this older chassis just struggles to dump that heat. It's not unbearable, but it's definitely warmer than my newer devices. Let's talk performance. Inside is the A14 Bionic. It was the first five nanometer chip, which was a big deal back then. I actually ran Geekbench 6 on this unit and I got a 2098 single core and 4814 multi-core score. For daily stuff, it's still decent, apps open quickly, swiping is smooth enough, but, and this is a big one, the RAM is an issue. This phone only has four gigabytes of RAM. In 2026, apps are super demanding. I've noticed that if I'm browsing, listening to music, maybe checking social media, and I try to switch back to Safari or my camera, boom, it reloads. It's a bit annoying. It forces the phone to work harder to reload those apps, which again, makes it get warm. Also about Apple intelligence. I'll be honest with you guys, for me, the fact that this phone doesn't fully support the new on-device Apple intelligence isn't a deal breaker. You know, Apple intelligence is still kinda in that beta feeling stage. I usually just use alternatives that are more powerful anyway, like Gemini or ChatGPT, and they run fine as apps here. So don't let FOMO on that specific feature force you to upgrade. Now, cameras. The iPhone 12 has a dual 12 megapixel setup. For just posting on social media, it's still great. Honestly, the photos look fine. However, compared to the iPhone 17, it's a different world. The new phones have 48 megapixel sensors that are physically much larger. Like the sensor size difference is massive. The iPhone 12 misses out on all the new stuff, cinematic mode, action mode, and that optical quality two pass zoom you get from cropping the 48 megapixel sensor on the new phones. 
If you care about capturing really sharp memories or low light shots without noise, the gap between the 12 and the 17 is huge now. Okay, we have to talk about the battery. This iPhone 12 mini on my hand has 86% battery health. It's not my daily driver. Mostly it just sits on my desk for review purposes or as a backup while my main phone charges. But when I do use it, man, it's tough. The mini has a tiny battery to begin with around 2,227 milliamp hours with 86% health. If I use this as my main phone, I'd be getting like three to four hours of screen on time max you're basically tethered to the wall. I'd have to charge this thing twice a day easily to make it to bedtime. Even the regular iPhone 12, which is bigger, struggles by 2026 standards because the battery has just degraded over time. Before we wrap up, a couple of things you really need to consider. First, the port. The iPhone 12 is still on lightning. Everything else in my life is USB-C now. My iPad, my laptop, even my headphones. Finding a lightning cable is becoming a hassle. But a quick heads up on that, if you upgrade to the regular iPhone 17, you get USB-C, which is great for convenience, but the data speed is actually still USB 2.0 speed, same as this lightning port. So it's physically better, but not technically faster unless you go pro. And again, that 60 Hertz display by 2026 standards, it just feels like old tech. Every phone nowadays basically has 120 Hertz. So conclusion time. Is the iPhone 12 still worth it in 2026? Look, if you already have it and it works for you, that's awesome. It's had a great run, but I think right now is the perfect time to upgrade. Jumping from an iPhone 12 to an iPhone 17 is massive. You're getting the 120 Hertz display, USB-C, way better cameras, and a battery that actually lasts all day. Plus the base storage on the 17 is 256 gigabytes now, so you get way more space. The resale value of the 12 is still decent enough to get you some cash towards the upgrade. However, if you're like me and you just love the small mini size, I'd actually recommend you look for an iPhone 13 mini instead of keeping this 12. The 13 mini has a better battery and slightly better cameras, and it's just a more mature version of this compact design. But for everyone else, yeah, treat yourself to the upgrade. The 17 is significant. Anyway, that's my take on the iPhone 12 in 2026. Let me know in the comments if you're still rocking one of these or if you're planning to switch. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.